All right, now I'm going to go back out of order, back to what I was supposed to talk about on keeping the band together and what the Bengals can do as it relates to the rest of the AFC. Because we know, look, there are two human beings who have ever beaten Patrick Mahomes in a playoff game. Tom Brady, who did it twice, AFC Championship and then Super Bowl, and Joe Burrow, who did it once. And Joe Burrow recently appearing on the live New Heights podcast where they filled an arena in Cincinnati for this with Jason and Travis Kelsey. Joe Burrow was there, and he talked about his success against Travis Kelsey's Chiefs. He said, I think we both work really hard. They have great players. We have great players. I think we match up pretty well with them. I think we're built to beat them. I always appreciate the legendary battles we have. Guys are out there always making plays. Patrick is always out there making plays. Both teams have big-time defensive lines. It's a great matchup. And hell... In the AFC Championship game 2022, I remember thinking the Bengals are going to win this. Yeah, of course. Until Chris Jones wrecked the game for the Chiefs and and shut down what felt like a promising game-winning drive from the Bengals. And then Joseph Asai had that hit right on the sideline that gave the Chiefs an extra 15 yards so Harrison Butker could make the game-winning field goal. I thought the Bengals were going to win that game. Yeah. And Joe Burrow healthy, the Bengals can give the Chiefs Everything they can handle and then so a hundred percent. I mean, they are. I mean, Joe's not lying. They are built to to beat the Chiefs. You know, they're they're one of those teams that looked at that and went, wait, wait, this is who we got to conquer. Let's start to measure ourselves off that. And if we measure ourselves against the Chiefs, that should take care of our division and whatever else there. And and they do. They got the pieces. I think like when when you break it down and like at least for me, when I think of a quote like that from Joe Burrow, I go, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I knew that, right? But then you start to think about the nuance of the situation. Yeah, why exactly do they, right? I know we're going to have to talk about this. you know. And I, I think there's a few reasons. One, they got a pass rush usually that can get there, like Joe just said, with the D-line, with the front four, and they don't have to blitz if they don't want to, right? They're upset the first time in the AFC Championship game or the only time, right? What was the big deal in that game, Mike? Remember the the talk? The three-man rush with all the crazy coverages they played behind it. Remember, that was part of the whoa. So Cincinnati has a defensive coach in Lou Anarumo who is one of the better defensive minds in all of the NFL who can think outside the box a little bit and do some different things there. So that poses some problems for the Chiefs and what they do. They're good in, they've been good in the secondary, and then they got a good D-line. You add that with creativity in the calls, you go, well, yeah, that can give the Chiefs problems. We've seen them do that. And then I think you, you flip it over to the other side of the ball a little, Mike, and we know, hey, Spags and the Chiefs and all they do on defense, right? We talk about that all season long and in the playoffs and what game plan is going to come. Well, Burroughs kind of got that Brady-ish type of, wait, wait, hold on, I'll figure this out. Ooh, ooh, block him, check this, blah, 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 we're going to do that, check to that, okay, we're all good. And Steve has a hard time tricking him, let alone they have a true, tried and true system that they can rely on with rules, I think, that can really help them with, oh, wait, it's a crazy blitz, it caught us off guard, but we have rules for this within our West Coast system here to still attack that, and then, of course, they execute it with really damn good players, and I think that's why they, you know, they, do, they give the Chiefs all they can handle as far as that's concerned, Mike. The key for Burrow going forward is finding ways to avoid injury. He had that mm. unavoidable ACL tear his rookie year in November, came back from it good as new, 2021, led the Bengals to the Super Bowl, and then had the wrist thing last year. You know, when Tom Brady, one of the big takeaways from the Dynasty series that has created plenty of blowback for how Bill Belichick was portrayed, and I think – well, it extent, seems like Kraft five, and like, Brady made it, and it's like they made it together well, to like crap on Bill Belichick. That's what it <laughs> seems like. I mean, yeah. It it even even if that may not be the truth, it sure feels That's what everybody that says. way. It yeah. was a way to settle scores. It was a way to right. to be pro Kraft, pro Brady, anti Belichick. Some Shakespearean stuff that goes back twenty years potentially. But but Brady after he tore his ACL in two thousand eight. That's when he made that hard pivot to TB12 and pliability and extending his career and avoiding major injuries. And, you know, some of it is just dumb luck. But as I say all the time, Chris, when you have a team that has a cluster of injuries and it happens year after year after year, at some point it's not dumb luck. Yeah. At some point it's nutrition. At some point it's flexibility. At some point it's weight training. At some point you're doing something wrong. I've been saying about the Chargers for years. Right. Something's wrong there that all these guys are getting injured because 
you know, one year, okay, bad luck. Two years, maybe not. Three years, you got something wrong with what you're doing. Because I've said this before. When Rodney Harrison used to sit next to me in the NBC viewing room, his superpower is to watch nine games at once and instantly spot the potentially serious injury in any one of the games as it happens, which would cause him to slam his palm into my chest and say, look at this. And you'd see this guy get twisted up in knots and he pops right up and he's fine. It's like, how does that happen? Well, some teams know how to make their guys basically as flexible as Gumby, where they go out there and it helps to be young too, but they go out there and they get, you would think the ACL torn and they're up and they're fine. So I I think that back to my point, Joe Burrow, yeah, he's got to figure that out. To ask himself, right? Is it, if I just been bad luck? E have I been unlucky? I was trying to figure out. <laughs> I like I, that though. That was bad that luck. Field. E have that's, I been bad no, don't lucky? Don't forget unlucky. God. Let's go bad lucky. Seven, that's a, that's a Florioism. Uh, welcome to the club, slugger. Is that bad God. lucky? Are you two I've and a made, happy years oldie? Do you need your bottle too? I've <laughs> I've made I've made you better. I mean, you've been ripping off all these great words lately, thanks to my influence, and you're dragging me dragging down. Dragging you man. down. <laughs> so can Joe Burrow stop being bad lucky? Is it a matter of bad lucky, or is it is it he needs to go out and and hire Alex Guerrero? I don't know, but. That's the one impediment because when you have this New Year's Eve showdown that we anticipated last year go sideways because Joe Burrow suffered a season-ending injury en route to the New Year's Eve showdown with the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, we're going to have great regular season games and possibly great playoff games that don't happen if one of the two quarterbacks isn't able to show up. And I'm not saying he's injury prone. I'm yeah. just saying from his perspective. Yeah. I mean, he's got to figure it only, out. What? Four years into his career. Yeah. He's only four years into his career. Yeah. Is this an issue of bad lucky? Bad or, lucky. Is it, <laughs> or is it or is it that that there's there's something that he needs to be doing differently? Or is there something the Bengals need to be doing differently? Yeah. yeah you know, I, is there something yeah. going on there? Right. I don't know. But I I if he if he's as conscious and conscientious and aware of of everything around him, I would think that that's gonna be one of his major items going forward. How do I avoid these injuries so I can be in these big games in these moments and lead the Bengals to a Super Bowl and finally win one? I I, I feel like, you know, the word you use, conscientious, right? Like, I, I feel like he's as, as conscious of his place, what he is, you know, leading an organization, giving it confidence. I feel like, you know, he and Mahomes might be the leaders in the NFL in that department right there, Right. You know, uh, making adjustments to their own game, whatever they got to do physically to be better. I mean, you know, I, I had a conversation with Joe, right? He's the first pick of the draft. He went there. He got done with one year. He went, wait, um, I'm a conscientious person. I got to change the way I throw. I'm in the AFC North. It's windy. I'm not cutting the ball through these cold, windy days like I know I should be able to or some of these other quarterbacks. Let me adjust my mechanics. All right, well, here's another challenge, and you're right. I mean, I think he's he's got a – He's got to tinker with it regardless. Now, the Bengals have to help him, right? Now, that, this is, this is to me, part of it. So, he has to pull calf muscle to start training camp, right? That's certainly something on him because that's the start of camp and he's got to make sure he's ready to go and lose some whatever else there, right? But I think when we really think about it, and this has been a problem in Cincinnati, whether he tears his ACL and a year where they threw the ball his rookie year a lot, right, and put a lot on his shoulders and he got killed – protection has been a problem there in Cincinnati, right? They've gotten it right at the end of the year, you know, the last three years. But again, we can't forget even early on in this past season, it was all over the place the first few weeks. They were inept on offense. They couldn't figure things out. And then when Burrow got hurt in Baltimore with the wrist injury, they were in, wait, we figured it out. Watch out. We're about to go on a run mode. And of course that happened and hurt and that hurt their chances of doing that. But, you know, I think it's a little bit of him, Mike, to your point and adjusting things there. And then they got to, their own lines got to play better early in the year. So he's not beat to crap the way he's been beaten uh, so far early in his young career. It is amazing to see how he just stands in there 
And he's fearless. I remember he is his fearless. rookie year, he was getting banged around. I talked to him a couple of times, and, you know, his mom was worried about him, and eventually he had that knee caved in. But he 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 will do whatever needs to be done. But that was one of his bigger picture concerns when he redid the deal with the Bengals. Are they going to have enough help around him, especially on the offensive line? Gets back to T. Higgins. How much can they afford to devote to the receiver position when you need to have a great offensive line to get the most out of your quarterback because receivers are going to come and go throughout this 15-year arc of Joe Burrow's career, and I think the Bengals know that, and T. Higgins is probably going to be the first one to go after this year. I doubt that they tag him again, and I think it's going to be hard for them to pay him because they got to pay Jamar Chase as well. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.